Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're revisiting the Lenovo ThinkStation P520 Workstation PC. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the features of this PC, we're just going to go over the upgrades mainly, and this is because I already covered quite a bit of detail in my previous P520 videos, so I'll link to those in the description below. So without further ado, let's check out what's inside. This round of upgrades is a little bit more interesting. Just like my other P520 video, I installed a Intel Xeon W-2135 CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads. In addition to that, there's 64GB of Samsung branded DDR4 2400MHz ECC RAM. And this is a Radeon 7 graphics card with 16GB of HPM2 memory. To get a really good look at the red highlights, I've got to turn the lights down pretty low, but we can see that there's a cool kind of three-dimensional R on the end, and the Radeon logo is illuminated quite nice. This is a fairly well put together kind of industrial looking GPU with three fans, a beefy heatsink that has kind of a unique design where the fans are kind of built into the heatsink, which I found when I was taking this apart and cleaning it. I was actually pretty excited to test it out because it's just something different. I'm not going to get too into the heavy details of the difference between HBM2 and GDDR6 graphics. Let's just say that GDDR6 and GDDR6X will be greatly better for gaming. And for different workstation uses, the HBM2 memory offered by the Radeon 7 might have its advantages. So on top of some gaming, I'm also going to test some DaVinci Resolve video rendering and handbrake encoding, and we'll see what kind of results we get. I'd treat this as kind of a quick and dirty look. We're not going to get too in depth. For that, please leave a comment below if you have more information. I'd love to hear about it, and it's always good to share because I certainly can't cover it all. Underneath this heatsink beyond the GPU, there's Windows 11 installed onto a Timetech MS09 512GB NVMe solid state drive. And here's basically what it looks like, though this is the 256GB version, and it's running at speeds of PCIe 3.0x4. And for additional storage, I threw in a Western Digital Black 320GB hard drive. And powering it all is this 690 watt Delta Electronics power supply. And this design is proprietary to this build. So if you're looking to upgrade, you'll have to buy one that's shipped with the Lenovo unit. Some other features that are nice is the tower style CPU cooler with six copper pipes, a 90 millimeter exhaust fan, and inside this little enclosure that's actually designed to fit graphics cards and hold them in place is an additional 90mm air intake fan which provides some nice cooling directly onto the graphics card. And with this Radeon graphics card installed, we still have a full-size PCIe x16 slot available, though if you do install something it'll be right up against those fans. But we still have these two other slots here, and one up here for some additional expansion cards like USB ports, Wi-Fi cards, etc. And we'll quickly go over the I.O. on the PC case. On the front here we have 4 times USB 3.2 and one is always on. I kind of like how it's illuminated by the white LED. There's also a microphone and headphone combo jack and of course the power button. And just in case you wanted to use it, there is a CD slash DVD RW optical drive. And as I mentioned before in previous videos, I'm kind of fond of this 3D ThinkStation logo printed on front. And the rear I.O. of the motherboard features a mouse and keyboard PS2 port, which is a nice feature. Looks like a punch out for a serial port. 4 times USB 3.2 and RJ45 Ethernet port, 2 times USB 2.0 and audio jacks. And on the Radeon 7, there's 1 times HDMI 2.0B and 3 times DisplayPort 1.4A. There's a lot of neat expansion options with this PC. I definitely encourage you to check out things online or go watch my previous videos. I've had one sitting over here for myself waiting to be set up as a NAS or something like a Plex server. So now let's check out my DaVinci Resolve and handbrake test. And my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage is loaded up into DaVinci Resolve 19 and we're going to do a video render test. Let's see how long this one takes. And we're running at a fairly high speed for the CPU and in the 90s for percentage with the GPU around 28-31%. And the result is 4 minutes and 3 seconds. 
Now there's 11 minutes of 1080p gaming footage in Handbrake, and I selected Creator 1080p60 as a preset. Let's see what kind of performance we get here. Just for reference, I'm using this H.264 video encoder, which is utilizing 100% of the CPU. I'll do another run where we're using some of the GPU too. And it looks like we're finishing up in four minutes and six seconds. So now we have this H.264 AMD VCE video encoder selected. Let's see if that makes a big difference. And we can see we're getting GPU usage way up in the 90s and late 80s. And CPU is down to the 20s and late teens. And for this round, it took two minutes and 44 seconds. That is definitely an improvement. This 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory has got to come in handy for something. I've been keeping track of some render and encoding tests with the last few builds, and it looks like this Xeon CPU doesn't quite compare to these Ryzen and this i9 CPU. But still, that time's not really too bad. And I haven't really been measuring the GPU performance in handbrakes, so I'm going to start doing that to get a better idea of what performance we can get. Let's close this thing up again. Before we transition into the gameplay footage and the end of this video, I'd like to thank you for checking it out and please leave a comment below if you're using one of these in 2024. I'd love to hear how it's going and I'm especially interested if you manage to source and install a better CPU. I'd really like to test that out, but they're really expensive. So have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.